Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Here we've got a pair of running backs. We're hoping their number will be called plenty in today's game. It's Hyde's 49ers going up against Gore's Colts. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just a short time ago, smoke from the pyrotechnics filled the dome as the Colts made their way out of the locker room. We're set for football as the Colts get set to match up with the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. Quan Bray now to return this football. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Indianapolis Colts got their first one of the season in week three against the Browns. Jacoby Brissett bringing them onto the field, and he guided them to that win. They're hoping he can bridge the gap until Andrew Luck returns. Aren't they eyeing around a week six return? Yeah, Is that kind there. of the report we're getting for Andrew Luck? So in the interim, they go to Seattle next week, which is a tough trip. And Seattle's coming off of a loss to Tennessee, and they're going to be extremely motivated. But then they're home for the 49ers. That should be a game that they can compete and win in. They've got a great opportunity. And then they've got one against Tennessee, who's one of the hottest teams in the league. But they've beaten the Titans 16 out of the last 17 times, so they feel like they've got their number. First down, Brissett. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. It's lining up first and ten. Here's the first carry now for Frank Gore. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. Here are the starters now for Indianapolis. And in week three, T.Y. Hilton was really the standout, Charles. 153 yards and a touchdown reception from Brissett. Well, when you change quarterbacks, right, they went from Scott Tolzien to Jacoby Brissett, and Brissett hasn't been with the team very long. You're looking for any type of a comfort zone, a safety blanket, and T.Y. Hilton provides that, doesn't he? I mean, no matter what you do with him, play him outside, play him in the slot, throw it long, throw it short, he can turn everything into a big play. Let's go. They'll stick to the ground game with Gore. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Defensive starters now for San Francisco, a, a unit that played really well in weeks one and two, but got lit up a bit in week three. I think when they prepared for Seattle, they did it the proper way. They knew if they shut down the running game, it was going to be tough for Seattle to score because they don't have the same weapons out wide. And they did a pretty good job overall holding them down, even though they lost the game. The Rams a little bit different. They can spread the field and throw it to a number of targets, and that gave the 49ers defense a little bit more of a problem. And the result, 41 points. Right right. Come on. Come on. Third and short yardage, percent. And down he goes. The 49ers get there. Earl Mitchell able to drop him for a loss of 12. And it'll be fourth down. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big. But sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? 
typically a blitz. And even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, now that allows your blitzers to get there. The Colts send out their punter. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Brian Hoyer brings out the San Francisco 49ers. And last week against the Rams, they had five touchdowns, this offensive unit. 49ers had no touchdowns the first two weeks of the season. Yeah, how about how Brian stepped up his game? Because he's 22 of 37 throwing it. 332 yards, two touchdowns. Now, his interception that he threw, the first pass of the evening. Bounced back in a big way and almost brought the 49ers all the way back. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Out come the 49ers. And Charles, want to revisit week three. You mentioned Brian Hoyer had a good game over 300 yards passing. Well, the man that was the biggest recipient of that was Pierre Garçon. He had 142 yards, seven receptions. They brought him into San Francisco from Washington because he knew Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan had been the offensive coordinator in Washington. Pierre played for him. They also brought him in because his hands are unbelievable. He's had one drop in the last season plus, and the catches he made against the Rams, some of them were stupendous. They run it again with Hyde, and he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. able to get it to the 31 and that's enough for the first two new 49ers Hoyer to Garcon for the first that throw is not going to get them a whole lot but that really didn't matter did it they got what they needed on that throw picked up the first down and I'm going cliche here game of inches partner absolutely we and you talk to me a lot about opening drives how key those are to set the tone you kept the drive alive third down conversion here's big that's what they were aiming for. You want to keep moving the sticks, get into a rhythm, gain confidence as you go along. And right now, mission accomplished. Here's Hoyer. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Henry Anderson in there to make the sack. He buries him for a loss of 10. And, partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? And he's brought down after a good game. A good pick up there, a 22. The general consensus that Brian Hoyer was acquired by San Francisco to be a one-year solution at quarterback. I know Brian, he looks at it as a long-term solution. He wants to complete passes like that and say, I'm no stopgap, I'm here to stay, right? So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. All right, here we go. Green, 39. 
Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. George Kittle, the receiver that he was looking for. That'll bring up second down. And now a look at the defense for the Colts. When you look back at the 2016 season on defense for the Indianapolis Colts, and you look at the raw numbers, you're not impressed. 30th overall in total defense. So what they're trying to improve upon is playmakers. They've got to have some guys who can offset those types of numbers with making big plays and taking the ball away from the opposition. So second and 10 here. to the ground high. and they went the wrong way there losing yardage back at the 43 yard line they'll lose a yard and it brings up third and the offense there the o-line everybody really on offense they were just manhandled at the point of attack yeah you could pretty much call them all out couldn't you and <laughs> almost by name right that was a very tough sequence for the offensive line but how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. They'll look to throw here. And he's going to be out of bounds, but able to take it inside the 40-yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Hoyer going to hand it off to Hyde. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They wanted it every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. And not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. Second down, Hyde. And he showcases the spin, a pretty good game before he's taken down. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and that's going to bring up a third down. Relatively small sample size, but that's his longest run of the first quarter. Bounced it out to the outside to make it successful. And to get there, you actually need some help. It's not just your pure speed getting to the corner, making sure that the blocking is taken care of inside so the pursuit doesn't get you. And oftentimes, those wide receivers, tight ends that might be flexed out, they've got to control the edge and make sure no one from the outside can spill the play before he gets there. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And that'll set them back five. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Here we go now. Three, nine, nine. They'll look to throw. They'll find Goodwin here on the right side. And he'll go down at the 28. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will remain a scoreless game. 
Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And the Colts coming out now and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Throw right side, complete to Williams. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They go play action with Brissett. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. And that one results in 35 yards. They hit that crossing route really well. Excellent timing, puts it right on him, and he keeps running. Yeah, turned it upfield for good yardage. set to throw on first it's caught on the right side Williams seven yards the pickup on the pitch and catch not a big window to throw coverage wasn't too bad there yeah they had him under wraps pretty well but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball and the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone Now on second down, this is Gore. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. So it'll be first down here after the run. Here's Brissett. He shakes him off. This is caught. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break.
Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It's a loss of two. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. From back at the two, here's third and goal. Here we go. They'll try and push it in with goal. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Now this feels like old school football because this has turned into a good old-fashioned goal line stand. So on offense, what do you do now? Do you decide to run it or throw it if you go for it on fourth down? Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Terry's kick is good. And the Colts hit the scoreboard first. It's 3-0. And Adam Vinatieri still going strong at the age of 44. The oldest player in the NFL entered the league in 1996. And to put that into perspective, his age, you know who was born in December of 95? This year's number one overall pick, Miles Garrett. How about that? And Adam Vinatieri still making big kicks all along the way. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. The 49ers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. Now they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They start the drive with Hyde. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. The Niners on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. They're going to look to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short. They elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short. But you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. And his third year on is the punter, Bradley Pinion, to kick it away. Back deep for the Colts is Quan Bray. <laughs> 
So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Colts are going to take over, albeit deep in their own territory. the 25-yard line. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. Nothing there as he's met at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. So nothing there, but maybe you blame that on the blocking. Yeah, at some point, you've got to win at the point of attack, and on that play, that was all the defense. They made it happen. room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Give him three yards and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. An extra DB for the 49ers now on third. Out of the gun, Brissett. Over the middle, complete. That's Doyle. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. We always look for breakout seasons, and Jack Doyle had one in 2006 and one. Play fake here on first down. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. He was looking for Jack Doyle that time. And it's second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. the shotgun. It's Brissett. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. The Colts on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and ten. Again, it's Brissett. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Eric Armstead in there to get him for a loss of nine, and that'll lead to fourth down. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football.
The Colts send out their punter. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And the Niners are going to take possession, albeit deep, in their own territory. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And last drive, three and out, still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. Let's go! Blue Here's Hyde as they begin on the ground. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Again, it's high, and he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. He lost two there, and it's third down. Normally, when you put together a 3-4 defense, you want massive people up front who can eat up blockers and allow the linebackers to run free. But how about the big fella right there? Breaking all codes and getting into the backfield and making the play. The Niners on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third down and 12. They'll look to throw. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. John Simon, he's the one that gets him down. It'll be a loss of five, and it'll bring up fourth down. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Fielded at the 33. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Colts will go on offense here. First and 10. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And you know, their previous possession, they were able to move the football, but still wound up punting in the end. You know, in 2016, Carolina had a 20-play drive mm, yeah. that lasted over 10 minutes. And remember how it ended? In a punt. Yeah, I mean, how does that happen? You just don't see that happen every day. And this one may be not quite that bad, but still, you'd like to have a chance for points if you hold the football that long. Agreed. They'll try and start the drive here with Gore. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. Nice job by that defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down. Well played, I must say. Yeah, only getting one yard. There was no room to run. scrimmage and he goes down right there no gain on the play there so that doesn't help now they're looking up at a third and nine situation and as a defensive end getting off the ball quickly swarming to the football making a tackle that's what we saw right there yeah and that's what their job is and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance they're just headed straight for the quarterback that was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain oh he's got a man wide Complete. And he'll be 
taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A really nice gain of 25 yards. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they showed to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. They go play action here on first down. Throw's going to be incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Well, this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting them to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on third down? You're a little off balance. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This time, it's third and three. Here we go. One, nine. Reset. And incomplete on the deep ball. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So it's a seven-play drive, but it stalls out in the end. Let's credit the defensive front seven. They were a little leaky at the start of the drive, but they stiffen toward the end. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And let's look at Carlos Hyde now. He's had a good chunk of carries. Problem is for very little success. I don't want to put it all on his shoulders, but that's a big reason they're losing right now. Have to be very careful that he doesn't start pointing fingers. Offensive line obviously trying. The defense is doing a nice job against him today. When it's all said and done, it's all about the guy in the mirror. He has to get it done better going forward. See if he can look and do some soul searching now. you dream of right there when he gets a seam and just gets through it how about the explosiveness the burst to get there to begin with and then once he's in full gallop 
Good luck trying to track him down. And those plays so demoralizing for the defense. Absolutely, because you've done so much work trying to keep people in front of you. When they're past you and behind you, that's a tough one to swallow. And this one through the uprights and good. Well, I'm not sure if they drew that play up to score, but it scored indeed. One play on the ground and into the end zone for six. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On first and ten, Brissett. Going for the deep ball. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Dante Moncrief, 75 yards. And the Colts strike quickly here for six points. And that is how you retaliate after getting scored on one play. Big pass downfield, and you hit the end zone. Almost feels like two boxers just throwing haymakers at each other, doesn't it? One connects with a big one, the other comes right back. Okay, I'll show you. And they attacked right back on the first play of the drive and hit them big. Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Yet again, Pierre Garçon and company gearing up to take the field. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. Now back to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. 
Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Niners on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and five. They'll drop to throw. To the right side, caught by Salek. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he's on to punt for San Francisco. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. And they must have seen something leading up to this one that said, hey, we're going to be able to go deep because they've gone deep with a lot of success. And pick your phrase, pick your code words, your buzzwords, whatever, vertical stretch, deep passes, go routes, right? What's that Why? you love? What's that oh, you four love? Verts. Four verts. All of it working because they're able to find ways to get deep and for him to show off that big, big arm. We see some of that big arm right here. He has been great. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard. Looks to be right around the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. set on first down. It's caught. Kamar Aiken. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down.
it's Gore. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Larry Ridley will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. The Colts on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and eight. To throw is Brissett. And that is incomplete. The Colts send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Now the Colts defensive unit trots back out there. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of, great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. It's the rookie out of Florida, Quincy Wilson. So they've got the football, and they'll start right on the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot, and now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. And our focus now shifts to Frank Gore. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. Brissett throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. <laughs> Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one, and let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap, jump too quickly. Second down throw for Brissett. And he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because 
You prefer not to give him another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Reset from the gun on third. And that's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Vinatieri now ought to try the field goal for the Colts. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And now it's a two-score game at 9, 16-7. So they had great field position, but a three-play drive that actually goes backwards, and then they kick the field goal. And I think the key sequence in there, the key phrase you just gave us, a three-play drive, had the momentum, great field position, unable to move the football. kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Brian Hoyer and his 49ers heading back out there. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Let's go! Three, 19. Three. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin. And now it's second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been terrific so far. This will be taken at the 13. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And he's had his chances in this game. He just hasn't been able to find any daylight so far. Patience, patience, patience. And that's the hard part for a runner because they expect every run to be a big one for something to pop. So they have to sometimes go through the struggles before it happens for them later in the game. 
but he got to give credit to the rest of the team. They've worked around the fact that he hasn't had his normal big game. Yeah, despite his struggle, still winning here in the second quarter. A first down throw for Brissett. Catch left side here by Aiken. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. Set now on second down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The Colts on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and ten. Here's Brissett. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. The Colts send out their punter, standing right on his own five-yard line. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. This is brought in at the 21. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Yet again, Pierre Garçon and company gearing up to take the field. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far, just a single catch in this game. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Second down now after the pass completion. Let's go! Green 39! Green 39! Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. John Simon in there to get him. His second sack now of the afternoon.
They'll throw now on the final play. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Colts are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The 49ers won't panic either. They know they just need to take it one play at a time. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. Colts opening drive. Mitchell is going to take down the QB here. This ends up as a huge loss in yardage. First and 10, Anderson's got to get to the quarterback here. This will go as a loss of 10. Now midway through the second. Look out, Hyde gets into the clear. And he'll go in from 78 yards out. They go up by one. Now first and 10, the long ball will find its mark here. Then this play will go for six. They go up by six. Okay, Larry, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Set to return, here's Raheem Mostert. And a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back at the 22-yard line. Here comes the 49ers offensive unit as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. The third quarter begins with a run by Hyde. Pretty nice move, but not a ton of space there. They stop him shy of the 25. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. So much of this game is about leverage. We always talk about low man wins in the trenches. Plus like that at just about every position. And sometimes if you lose that leverage and you're losing the battle, just jump up at the line of scrimmage and try and bat the ball away. And that's exactly what happened there. Play action. They'll throw. And he goes out of bounds across the 40-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. Right, here we go. Three, 19. 
Now a play fake here on first down. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll set up to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Taylor. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They go play action here on first down. Throw left side caught by Goodwin. 20 yards on both of those plays back to back there. They are moving now. It's another first down. in the red zone this time. Here's High. And he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Here we go now. Green, 39. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw over the middle. It's incomplete. Garrett Selleck, the tight end, was the target. And that'll make it third down. The throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll push his way up to about the 14. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. And the 12-year veteran knocks it right through. And the deficit tram to six now at 16-10. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time. And he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level. And he's able to get back on track. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. A look at Dante Moncrief. He and the offense getting ready to go again here. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes, 
That means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Reset to throw on first. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Doyle. Good yardage there for the Colts. 18 and a first down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Fresh set of downs here. Reset. Caught left side by Hilton. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Led the NFL with 1,448 yards in 2016. The first Colt to do so since Reggie Wayne in 2007. How about this guy? He's been something. Yeah, four straight years now over 1,000 and three straight Pro Bowls for T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, what I love about him, inside, outside, he can work it go. off. They go play action with Brissett. And now he'll turn and off his back foot, he'll heave this deep. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on, third down. I remember a coach telling me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL. Corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. The Colts on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This will be third and five. They'll run. This is Robert Turbin. <laughs> And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. Back to the ground, this time with Gore. And he is leveled. Knocked down hard. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he was looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it, because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Here we go. One, nine, nine. They run. It's Gore. <laughs> and they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And here comes play number six on this drive. First down, it's Gore. Gore hit. He lost the football. And now this is scooped up by the 49ers. And he's going to return it to the 21-yard line. All I know, partners, that with every play call that came in, there was a little discussion about, hey, we can seal this bad boy. We can really put ourselves in a great spot to take total control 
and yet they find a way to cough it up. Yeah, the two-score game opportunity eludes them, and now a chance for the other side to come back here. Yeah, that means defense has to go out there and make some plays themselves. So we call sudden change. Let's see if the defense is mentally ready to take care of it. way forward to about the 23 yard line give him a couple on the carry there second and eight yeah that wasn't a big run just a short one there but guess what sometimes you treat it like boxing you throw that jab out there and you throw it again you throw it again then you come with a big punch later maybe they're just trying to set them up second down following the run He'll drop to throw. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. There go play action with Hyde. Now it's Hoyer. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Jonathan Bostick coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, 3 for 10. This is third down and 12. Let's go! 3, 19! Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength, and he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Back to the workhorse today. It's Gore. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. 
He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. From the shotgun, it's Brissett. On the right side, it's Hilton with a catch. And he'll be about a full yard shy of the 20 at the 19-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. So the offense has it first and 10. Come on, let's go. Red, Red. Now Gore. And he'll power his way up near the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They got to feel pretty good about that one. Come on, let's go. Five, on the counter, Gore. And he'll get this up to the 34 yard line. A gain of 11 that time, and a Colts first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven, reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. So here we go, first and ten now. To throw is Brissett. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Navarro Bowman coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. another play so we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close we'll return with more after this this is the nfl and it's on ea sports back now in indianapolis it's the colts they've got control of the football they also have the lead as we start the fourth The Colts on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third and 17. Let's go! One, nine! One, nine! From the gun, here's Brissett. Throw left side complete. That's Doyle. A big 30-yard play on third. Could just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively a backbreaker. Oh. 
And now a first down following that long gain. Here we go. Brand to throw Brissett. And some room to work. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll make it a second down. And that's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. He was looking for Dante Moncrief that time. And it's third and short. Well, partner, I think the defensive fellas got the memo, and they decided to cover him on that play. Yeah, he's already up over 100 yards in this game. They tried a deep shot, couldn't get it. Yeah, when you've had that much success, finally, someone said, let's try and put a stop to it and put people on him. They'll try and pick up the first with Gore. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. This late in the game, Charles, I think you maybe seriously have to think about going for it. Especially where they are in terms of field position, because this is almost like no man's land. Might hurt your punter because there might not be enough space, maybe too far for your field goal kicker. I I'm like the old rule. Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Possession is nine-tenths of winning the game. Go for it. Get the first down. Close it out. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. And San Francisco gets set to go here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Hoyer. Caught left side, Garcon. Touchdown, 49ers. Pierre Garcon, 58 yards. And the Niners are a point away from leading this game. And they just ran the fly route there, didn't they? You broke it down perfectly. He ends up catching that one and taking it all the way into the end zone. Well, thanks. It was pretty simple to break down, though. I mean, that's just a guy going, running on the go route, making a play. Speed, kills. speed, <laughs> speed. And what does it do? It kills. There you go. Now gold for the extra point. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. And we can break that scoring drive down pretty easily. One play, a long touchdown pass into the end zone. Pinion now to kick this one away. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. Frank Gore and company trotting back out there as they get set to go again on offense. After some early struggles running the ball, they've really picked it up. I don't, early it just seemed like there were no holes there. Now all of a sudden, the holes seem to be there. I don't know if that's just my imagination. And give them credit that they kept their confidence because sometimes when you get stuffed big in the running game early, especially for an entire half, it really makes you retreat a little bit, but not this group. They always had the confidence. If they just got their assignments down, they would get in sync with their runners, and off they went. Come on, let's go! The set on first down. And they can win it over the middle. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. That one goes for 36 yards. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into the right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. Brissett. And it's caught right at the 10 yard line. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Dante Moncrief, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Colts have taken the lead here in the fourth. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air. Because right now, we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're, you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab the nugget when I can. Here's Bissett. And his throw is incomplete. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands, he just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere, seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. Yeah, some might have returned that one. He won't. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start the drive from the 25. Now Carlos Hyde gears up to take the field again. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably gotten some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Now Hoyer. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Carlos Hyde was the target. And that'll bring up second down. just shy of the 40 they'll mark him down at the 39 they give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs 
When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. The offense lining up first and ten. A play fake to hide. Now it's Hoyer toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL, but if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. to throw here and incomplete there a nice hit jars the ball free and brings up third down the Niners on third down they've had a lot of chances but not much success converting only three times this is third and ten Looking to throw. They're able to find Garcon. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Back to throw. And he's going to be out of bounds, down inside the 20. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a run with high. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. Offense. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. on the play and that'll bring up a third and one look the first down marker is out there but sometimes it's hard to find for an offense when they're in a long yardage situation which usually means throw the football in this case they went against the tendency and ran it and boy the reward was there a big big pickup 
And guess what? It's now third and very short in order to try and pick up a first down. They'll look to throw. This will be caught at about the six. And across the chalk into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. A great effort there from 10 yards out. And the 49ers have moved out in front here in the fourth quarter. And that's another route that defenders would vote to take out of the game. A wheel route? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver, as they zip out on the sideline, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, well, the defenders hate it there. It happened, and it resulted in a touchdown. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. He'll look to throw. And he's got it. So the two-point conversion is good, and they add on to their fourth-quarter lead. So that effort gives them a three-point cushion and guarantees that a field goal going forward won't beat them. Yeah, that's really good strategy because that's all you care about, not getting beat at this stage. At least give your team a fighting chance. Hunter Pinion now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And a penalty marker's down on the field. And they might be backing up a bit here to start the drive. Illegal block in the back. Return team. Yeah, this is going to put them back with a not great field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. And not great starting field position here for the offense. Right, 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 right. Let's go! One, two, a first down throw for Brissett. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. It'll be a gain of 17 in an Indianapolis first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Out of the gun, Brissett. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But I believe the Colts were able to fall on this when they were. And so possession will remain with Indy. On plays like this when the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because... This is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. So the offense avoids disaster, keeps possession. Now it's second down. Play fake, Brissad. He's going to air one out. And got his man complete. Pass the 20. And he gets it down deep into San Francisco territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 77 yards. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible.
So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. False start offense. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. It's Gore, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Let's go! Brad, 38! We're set now. Throwing middle. But it's incomplete. Kamar Aiken, the intended receiver. And it's third down. An extra DB defensively here. Big stop needed on third and goal. He may be a blitzer. Brissett sets to throw it. Yeah, he's got it. Ten yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. Well, he flew past 200, 300, 400 yards. Now he's over 450 yards passing on the day. So what you're saying is oxygen for everyone catching the ball and trying to defend? Yeah, especially those guys trying to defend right now. No doubt. They've got to be a confused group because they haven't been able to defend him very well at all. And I think he just wants to keep firing. When you have that kind of a day, you're just locked in. Just keep calling those pass plays. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch right down the pipe, and this game's all even here in the fourth. And he didn't leave much doubt there, did he? Good snap, good hold, and that one was dead center. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Yet again, Pierre Garçon and company gearing up to take the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. for the afternoon workhorse. It's high. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. 30, 20, 10, 5. And he'll be taken down deep into Indianapolis territory. A big play there on the catch and run. 69 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability. 
is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. for that'll bring up second down well brandon all receivers are trying to make sure that the defender thinks they're going to the middle of the field when they're running the out cut on that play didn't get it done very well because that one was batted down even score late in the fourth let's see if the defense can play within themselves not give up the big play and contain and keep this knotted up they run high, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard there, and that'll bring us to third and goal. <laughs> I have to laugh a little bit because he actually handed it off. I thought with the two touchdown passes he's thrown in this one already, he'd go ahead and fling and try and get a third one. Yeah, now from this spot on third down, I think he'd probably throw it here. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. They, they won't even send in a running play here, I don't believe. I think they go ahead and try and throw it for a touchdown. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. And this is going to be incomplete. They may be snapping a ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. So a big kick coming for Robbie Gold. This for the lead in the final stages. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it, and he's into the clear. He's at the 50. He's at the 40. The 20. 10. 5. And he will score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. They will take a seven-point lead now. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out comes Brian Hoyer and the offense to take over. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? 
And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards of the first down completion. Let's go. Someone moved. Flag is out. That's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. So that'll back him up five. off to his fullback and getting this just shy of midfield they'll spot it at the 49 that good for 19 at a first down he's back to throw nowhere to go here he lost the football and i believe the colts have recovered yes they have And they were hoping to get down there, get the score, and get this thing into overtime. How deflating. Absolutely. I mean, let's face it, heartbreaking. They had an opportunity, had a chance, and probably were feeling pretty good about what was going on. And that was taken away from them by their own mistake. And the opportunity squashed. And the Colts getting ready to go. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Space to run past the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. And now the 49ers signal for a timeout defensively. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. like he'll throw here and this is caught and that could seal it it's a touchdown well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now but i'm looking at your face and i'm thinking i've got to be careful with that well it's a two-score game you're inside of two minutes i think you can breathe relatively easily now yeah you can but still you got to stay vigilant can't give up anything cheap and easy that could put you in some jeopardy Terry now to tack on the PAT. And the lead is up to 14. They had the short field and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone.
set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And San Francisco gets set to go here. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> They'll come out throwing here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Back to throw now on first down. Wide open receiver complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A very solid gain of 27. And now a first down following that long game. Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. Now back to throw. The swing pass caught. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown San Francisco. Marquise Goodwin, 33 yards. And the 49ers have cut it back within a score. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. Gold to add the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down now to a touchdown. The drive there only spanning three plays. And the end result for the 49ers, a touchdown. So with just under 40 seconds to go, you figure this is going to need to bounce their way if they have any shot. Oh, I think the Niners got it back. Yes, San Fran recovers. So they've accomplished half the mission, Charles. They get the onside kick. They do need a touchdown here, but they've got some time to do it. In the excitement, there's no need to press. Plenty of time. They have the opportunity. Now they just need to execute and finalize things. had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. Go, go. Right, 
So the D gets the sack on first, and now it brings up second down. They'll look to throw. And he fends him off. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Green, huh? Here's Hoyer. Oh, no, he lost the football. And I believe the Colts have recovered. Yes, they have. Yeah, holding on to the football is a big problem for the 49ers last year. Shouldn't surprise any of us, right? When you're 2 and 14, you probably will lead the league in fumbles as they did. But they have 15, 15 last year. 15 of them, yep, and a 2 and 14 record, kind of indicative. The Colts in victory formation now as they take the knee. Well, I know it points to this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.